Um, diversity. This is going to be a focus of mine. Uh, I know it's a focus of the CNOs, of course, but it's um, and, I, and we would we would do it f for that reason uh, alone. But it's a personal big deal to me. Uh, and this gets back to my valuing diverse opinions and where diverse opinions come from. Um, I don't know what the state of our diversity is in the community. I'm going to talk to Dave Nunnally about that. Um, uh, if we're good, great. If we're not, I want to get us to be good. Um, and if we are in good shape, I want to find out how we stay there. But remember, you know, my last rule was stay physically fit, you know, because you represent the military. Well, the public affairs community is supposed to represent the Navy. The Navy is, to a degree, supposed to represent the country it defends. So if we aren't representative of our Navy, and, uh, and our Navy, I know, is working hard on being representative of the country that we serve, then there's a disconnect that we need to kind of close. So diversity is going to be a big deal to me uh, in uh, detailing. I will, um, I, I will spend, I know, a lot of time on detailing. I want you to know that I will put... Uh, it, 110% into the detailing decisions that I make or recommendations that I make. Um, I, I say this at risk here, and I don't want to send the wrong message, but I'm going to say it anyway. I never once asked for a set of orders, and I never once turned a set down. Now, I'm not saying that that's the way you all should run your careers. I think you should pay attention to where you want to be in five years and even 10 years, and you should focus on that. You should look at the roster and look at what you might be interested in. I want to know what you want to do. You should be more interested than I was. Um, just because that approach worked for me doesn't mean it works for everybody. I also didn't have any control over my life the last 11 years. I was uh, with Admiral Mullen from the time he made three stars and stayed with him throughout. And um, so it wasn't like I had a choice. It, it wasn't even a phone call we had. It was, you're coming. And OK, I'm coming. And off we went. Um, and it worked out great. I mean, he got great jobs. And I got to see him lead in, at terrific levels. And, and I'm very, very grateful for my association with him and for all the experiences it gave me. But it's not going to work for everybody. Not, not, you're not all going to get lashed up to a flag officer who's going to take you with you everywhere you go. Um, so I do want you to be interested in yourselves and where you're going um, on the enlisted side and the officer side. Uh, but I, uh, I do want you to know I'll take it very, very seriously. I've also uh, been talking to the, to the Master Chief about, um, about the enlisted side. I don't know enough about our MC community. I'm going to be trying to spend a lot of time getting to know that community uh, uh, well because it's, uh, it's big and it's powerful. Uh, they're do and you all are doing terrific things. Uh, but I, I know I need to work on that. I did talk to him a little bit about the Chief's Mess. I want our, our E7s and above to think of themselves, act like, be a no kidding chief's mess. I think that's important. The chiefs do run the Navy, and I want them to run this community, and I want them to keep me honest about what they're doing and uh, what we can do better for, for the, the enlisted, uh, enlisted ranks. And some of the stuff I'm, I'm talking about doesn't just apply to the officers. I, you know, they talked about being advisors. Our enlisted MCs can be just as good an advisor as any officer. Same goes for you civilians. You have all been around a long time. You have a lot of experience. You've seen things that those of us in the military never see because we're constantly coming and going. Uh, so I'm going to be looking to you. I mean, in terms of advice and, and, and uh, consultations, you guys are top of the list just because of your corporate knowledge and experience. Um, number two, priority is going to be, and I, this may sound a little bald, but um, uh, frankly, it's the way I think. I think. I think our job, particularly here in headquarters, is to defend the Navy's program. And you can do that by telling stories about sailors out in operational uh, events and, oper and, and, and out there in the fleet, of course. But our job, we have a Title X responsibility. We have to support the CNO and the Secretary as they uh, try to uh, procure the resources to make the Navy ready. CNO's priorities are very clear. Uh, war fighting first, operate forward, be ready. All of those, those three goals of his tie perfectly into the kind of budget that we submit. Uh, Tom Shanker, uh, uh, just a terrific reporter, I know all of you know, but I mean, he says it best. Uh, a budget really is a strategy of sorts. And so what you're asking the American people to fund uh, says a lot about what kind of a Navy you want. To, to have and what kind of a Navy they are willing to let you have through their elected representatives.
So our job is to help the secretary and the CNO make that case. He has a legis legislative affairs uh, office, uh, obviously, that does that on the Hill. I want, and I've already uh, talked to Admiral Franken, my intention is to have a very close relationship with him and help him as best we can, um, because we can be an arm to do that uh, through the ways, the many ways that we can communicate with the American people. Uh, so it's a, it's, it really is about the, about the program. Um, and the last thing was, is about relationships. Uh, I really want to, where, where our internal and external relationships are strong, I want to make them stronger. Where they don't exist, I want to create them. Uh, this business is all about relationships. We talked a little bit about the press corps and that kind of relationship, but it's the relationships with the American people. That's why the outreach efforts are so incredibly important. I was blown away as Denny walked me through uh, outreach America's Navy and all the things that you guys are doing it's just eye-watering I had no idea uh, but there's such power there because it's really if we're doing it right it's all about relationships with communities all across the country but there's relationships here in the building too that I know I need to work on the secretary of the Navy doesn't know me uh, I need to I need to make sure that he has the opportunity and that uh, I take time to get to know him and what his priority are I do, I've never worked for the CNO so I've got to work on that um, there's all kinds of relationships inside and out. I want you to work on it too. Every day you ought to be looking at your Rolodex or your contacts in your, uh, in your Outlook and um, seeing who's in there. And who haven't you reached out and touched in a while that maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to do that. Uh, you don't need to wait. In fact, the, last, the, the worst time to try to develop a relationship is when there's a crisis and you need it. And this is another thing I tell flag officers when it comes to talking uh, this, this post-interview world that they're living. You want to develop relationships with the press corps all the time, maintain them, so that when you really need to count on them and cash them in, you can do that. But it goes across the board, not just to the press corps, but everybody else. <laughs>